Good morning, everyone. Uh, for, for the Thunderclap campaign in the, in the package you got this morning, uh, you'll notice that you have an opportunity to uh, send out a, a, a unified message to uh, all of our followers. Uh, as of right now, that message up, is up to about 550,000 or 600,000 folks. Uh, so if you take a moment, pull out the social media card in your packets and, uh, and fill them out. But I'm not, uh, I'm not here to, to talk just about social media, so if you wouldn't mind uh, putting my slides up. Thanks so much. So the idea of universal national service has been proposed again and again. I'm here today to convince you that this vision is actually achievable. We've done big things as a country before, and we can do them again. All right. So in 1900, 10.6% of 14 to 17 year olds were enrolled in high school. By 1920, that was up to 31.2%. And by 1930, over half, that's 51.1% of 14 to 17 year olds were enrolled in high school. This wasn't the result of one social cause. Increase in enrollment was consistent across both race and gender. So what actually happened here? There were a number of causes to include social justice, an increase in the need for trained and skilled labor, the need to educate and integrate an influx of new immigrants, and the simple fact that by the turn of the century, most Americans had already completed primary school. But at root, within a generation, every segment of our society, public and private alike, decided to come together to redefine the traditionally understood pathway to adulthood. It was not a single piece of landmark federal legislation that did it. It was a movement. There were more schools, public and private, governed locally by more communities, urban and rural alike. There were more teachers, there were more employers demanding workers for higher skilled jobs. More kids wanting to be educated, and more parents demanding that their kids go to high school. Americans of all backgrounds from all sorts of communities figured out how to expand secondary education in their own context. Simply, we did something big because the situation demanded it. We became the first nation in the world to provide a secondary education to its masses. When we passed the GI Bill in 1944, we were able to send a nation to college because we had had a nation that, for the most part, had already been to high school by that point. By 1941, at the outbreak of World War II, 71% of 14 to 17 year olds were enrolled in high school. So something that started in our communities laid the foundation for us to become the global leader. Coming together to do the right thing, together, set us up for a future success that we couldn't have imagined at the time. So let's fast forward to today. If we could accomplish something that big in the early 1900s, when we weren't yet the world's power, certainly we have the capacity to get to just one million service year positions by 2023, and the capacity to get every young American who wants to to serve within a generation. We can, once again, redefine the traditionally understood pathway to adulthood. Our task is different, but it's no less urgent. To make a year of full-time national service, a service year, a cultural expectation, common opportunity, and civic rite of passage for every young American. By 2023, we aim to create one million stipended service year positions annually for 18 to 28 year olds. Imagine the power of a country where all of its major institutions, the ones represented in this room today, came together to give every young person the opportunity to serve. Just like the high school movement, this would afford our country many positive outcomes that we can predict right now and I'd bet more than a few long-term breakthroughs that we can't even currently conceive. Such ideas have been proposed before. The purpose of my talk is to let you know that such cultural change is achievable today in a way that it never has been before and provide a framework for everyone in this room to take action to achieve it. So how do you go about creating a new cultural norm? To start, it helps to have an idea whose time has come. National service is the idea for our time. Why? First of all, our country needs it. In 1900, we needed more skilled workforce to disseminate information to ensure everyone could fulfill the American dream. Today, we suffer from a general malaise in our sense of citizenship. There's no longer a common institution that binds us together in a common identity as Americans. But beyond that ideological underpinning, there are structural forces at work. There are obviously major problems that need solving, and national service can be leveraged against them in an effective way. There's popular support for the idea, and young people want to serve. 
we'd merely be giving these young people an institution that's reflective of their already existing enthusiasms. There's a general belief in the power of service to solve problems across all sectors of society. Businesses offer time off for service. Schools already include some service in their curricula. Companies and colleges are beginning to recognize the power of a broadening experience in making better employees and stronger students. In this sense, all we have to do is intensify what already exists. The military is more supportive of the idea than it's ever been. The nonprofit industry is more robust than it's ever been. So we have a stronger infrastructure to support a new institution of a million people in service. Finally, we have the technology to quickly connect young people who want to serve with the nonprofits that can host them, to the funders that can support the service year experience, and to the schools and employers that want people who have served. So while every sector of society will need to adapt somewhat to account for, for the new institution of a service year, each of these sectors also stands to gain from it. If it's the right idea for its time, you still need to build a movement. The first part of this, I think, is building the infrastructure to support your idea. In 1900, that meant building more high schools and training a new class of teachers. Today, we'll need to create opportunities for everyone to serve where they don't currently exist. You need to attach that infrastructure to existing institutions in order to achieve scale. Over time, you needed a high school diploma in order to get a job, so there was external pressure to attend high school. Similarly, the completion of a service year should be a credential that opens you up to incentives in education and hiring. The goal is, the, is for the service year to be viewed as advantageous rather than an interruption on an otherwise straight path. And finally, narrative. You need to create a new language and a broader narrative that makes the idea organically spreadable in a manner that you can't even predict. The term service year, I think, is just that. It says what it means, and it means what it says. It lets people know that you've committed to service for a specific amount of transformative time. Can you imagine a country where young kids ask, where are you going to do a, your service year? Or where we get together in a bar 20 years after completing our service year and ask one another, where did you serve? But none of this would be possible with a single organization alone. Large-scale social change requires all of society. With that in mind, we formed the National Service Alliance. It's comprised of four organizations, the Franklin Project, the National Conference on Citizenship, Service Nation, and Voices for National Service. We're committed to the big idea, and we have the beginnings of the capacity to achieve it. We share a vision and three goals that you can see on the screen. Our vision is a country where national service is a common expectation and opportunity. Our first goal is to inspire Americans to understand and embrace national service in a service year. And our third goal is to build an ecosystem for national service in the 21st century. So how will this system actually work? It will work by getting buy-in from every segment of our society. There are specific things that everyone in this room can do. Here's an 18 to 28 year old. He or she might be rich or poor. They might have finished high school, started a community college, completed all or part of a four-year degree, or be, to dis be disconnected from school or employment altogether, or be a couple years into a new career. We need to create pathways to push all of them into service. To inspire young Americans to serve requires the following action. First, everyone needs to talk about a service year as an essential issue. It can't be issue number 14 or 15 on the collective agenda. We need to create a movement where it's viewed as the legacy that our generation leaves. More simply, begin using the term service year in your everyday lives. The military needs to vocalize its support for expanded civilian service positions and help us to democratize the meaning of the term service to country. The pledge that we're announcing later this morning and that you found in your check-in packets is the beginning of this effort. Youth service organizations, many of whom are represented here today, need to create a deliberate recruiting pipeline from the youth volunteerism that's so ubiquitous today into a year of full-time national service. Faith communities need to encourage their congregants to serve, parents must encourage their kids to serve, and young people must loudly demand the opportunity to do so. That 18 to 28 year old will then need an opportunity to serve. Demand for the service year, as we all know, already far outstrips the supply of positions. So we need to expand the number of these opportunities. The federal government must, at a minimum, fulfill the promise of the Serve America Act and expand national service even further through the creation of new agency corps and other innovative corps. States need to follow the example of Iowa and expand service year opportunities through executive order, 
or legislative action. Local governments and cities need to show examples of what service looks like at scale in specific communities, urban and rural alike. Nonprofits need to, need to leverage the new service year platform to certify positions and create new cores. Higher education institutions of all stripes will need to create new models that integrate service years into curricula. The private sector needs to create opportunities for junior employees to serve through professional cores, and philanthropy and funders of every type need to fund the expansion of service year positions. But the service year will never achieve scale. It will never be a new rite of passage until it is viewed as part of the normal pathway to school and employment. Employers must begin to incentivize service year alumni in their hiring admissions decisions. Higher education institutions need to encourage applicants to serve and accept, and accept service for course credit. Government at all levels must offer incentives to those who have served. Clearly, each part of this system that I put on your screen today and each, in each of the National Service Alliance's three goals are interrelated. Inspiring Americans to serve, providing opportunities for them to do so, and incentivizing and reintegrating them. But something that's different today is that we have the technology to bring all of this together. I'll be short on this because you'll get two more briefings on it today, but the service year platform is that connective tissue. And it will also provide an easy place for every single in the per person in this room to directly buy into the big idea. It will be easy for a young person to find a position, to simply know that it exists and to direct their enthusiasm when they begin to hear about the concept of a service here. It will allow organizations to find applicants, funders of all stripes to fund the service year experience, and most, most importantly, confer a sense of commonality on the service year amongst thousands of organizations. Every organization must maintain its own identity, but Americans will be connected by the common experience that is known as a service year. And finally, the service year platform will provide a deliberate credentialed connection between the service year experience and work in school. Every single person in this room is affiliated with one or more of the institutions that I've just outlined here. Well, last slide doesn't matter. I've offered you a plan here. <laughs> and a way for each of you to contribute, but it won't be easy. We'll need to find ways to fund this at scale. We need to ensure that the service year opportunity is an, is, is an opportunity truly for everyone. We need to increase the capacity of nonprofits to train and administer a million new people every year in service, but we can overcome these challenges. As much as we'd like one sweeping solution, it will not happen overnight. It took a generation to make a high school a common ex expectation for everyone, and it will take just as much time and just as much effort to do the same for a service year. My briefing is just that, it's a briefing, and this summit is just that, it's a summit. Our ultimate success will be contingent upon thousands of institutions and millions of individuals taking persistent action over the next decade and more. And so I conclude by offering a challenge. Every generation leaves a legacy unto its country. Stick with us over the next 10 years and we will make active citizenship through universal national service the legacy that our generation leaves. Thank you.